Okay, everybody. Well, here we go. We are now going to do the second part video of the Q&A responses. Um, I will stop after this video because I'm not going to do a part, part three because if I do, I think a lot of people will kind of lose interest after a while. So, you know, if I just stick with just these two, I think it'd be a little bit better. So, um, but what I, what I will do is I will re, I will answer the remaining questions I have and I will also answer some that I got on my part one video um, since I made it. And uh, once again, sorry in advance if I butcher your name, okay? I'll try not to, but we'll see what happens, okay? So here we go. Okay. So the next set of questions comes from J JK18. Well, hello there. Um, so his first question is, um, what temperature do they keep your tank at? Yes. Second question. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, well, I keep the temperature... Um, I mean, if you want a serious answer, um, during the summer, um, both floors of the house are kept at 73, and um, during the summer, during the day, I already forgot if I said that, um, 73, and then at nighttime, my room goes to 69, and the other part, the rest of the second floor goes to 72, and then kind of the same thing, the first floor main area goes to 72 at night, and then their room goes to 68, I think, maybe, um, at nighttime. So we kind of keep it cooler at nighttime when we're sleeping, obviously. Um, in the winter, uh, the house is kept at 68 during the day. And at nighttime, it goes down to 65, I believe. And it's very comfortable temperatures. You know, we, we like to keep it cool at nighttime when we sleep, obviously. So, But, you know, um, the house is very well insulated. And I can only recall a handful of times where it was really cold outside and the, the heat still came on at night because it was that cold. But overall, that's the temperatures we keep it at. So they're pretty good, comfortable temperatures to have, you know? Um, second question is, um, have you ever bitten the person who takes care of your tank? That's classified. No. Um... No, not really. You know, basically what I do is, you know, um, if they're nice to me, I'm nice to them. And if they're not, well, let's just say they will won't say anything about me again. <laughs> um, there are a lot of fish in the sea. Have you ever eaten someone who disagreed with you? Well, no, I'm not, I'm not your typical millennial. You know, I'll just be like, okay, whatever, and walk away from them. If they want to keep doing that, let them, you know. <laughs> um, what if the person who chums you did so with vegetables, which, which, which oh, let me, let me read that again, sorry, what if the person who chums you did so with vegetables, and that's all you get, well, that's very simple, I just go after the guy who's doing that then, because, I mean, you know, obviously, he's not a vegetable, so that would just work perfectly for me, um, <laughs> when you and your brother were little, did he ever jump over you, as in jumping the shark, <laughs> no, we never did anything like that, you know, we were, you know, we, we were pretty good when we were kids, you know, We'd have some teasing moments here and there, but nothing ever really involved, like, jumping over another. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like those questions. Those are pretty good. So the next question now comes from Blade Zero. How you doing, man? Um, been a while since you've moved into the new house. How has that place been so far? And have you discovered any local traffic or laundry products that have caught your eye? Well, the house has been good. You know, I have the occasional, um, I have the occasional backyard updates, as you know. Um, I think all the furniture is here now that's going to be for the most part, maybe some future pictures on the walls or something, but the uh, house has been good, you know, um, no leaks when it rains, um, basement's totally dry, even like with the, with that really rainy spring that we had, um, totally dry, nothing, it's been fantastic, um, and things are in good shape, you know, uh, no major problems, um, no light bulb replacements or anything like that, as minor as that is, so... Really, it's been good. It's been very good. I have no complaints overall. Um, we are actually, I will say in this video, we are going to be getting the front door replaced. Remember, I made that whole video about that. And um, I'm probably not going to be able to show it to you as it's happening because I'm going to be at work. But um, I'll show the finished project. Uh, finished project. I'll show the finished product uh, whenever that happens, uh, you know, whenever the time comes, okay? Um, oh, I guess. Any local traffic or laundry laundry projects um well you, you do know about that about that one project i told you about on like um uh what was it i think route six or something i said um it was going on for a while and then some point last year i think they ran out of money because they totally stopped and then they resumed it's very interesting because you know a lot of the the light sets on that road were were, were mast arm sets and they changed them over to span boxes now they don't really do span sets 
here like they do on Long Island. They have some existing ones that are like those, but I don't think they make new ones of this type. They basically, you know, put the lights on wires, but it's like in a shape of a square or rectangle. You know, there's four poles, and um, they just do that kind of setup. I don't know why they do it that way, but that's how a lot of places around here uh, seem to do it nowadays. I actually am very interesting, uh, interested about that because usually when mast arms go up, um, they stay that way. But in this case, it seems to not be the case. You know what I'm saying? It's interesting how they kind of do it differently around here. But um, there is one intersection not too far from me every time I go to work. I see it every every single day where it's an existing span box of sorts that they're changing into a new one. And um, I haven't gotten any videos on that because I just I haven't had the time. You know, I know people like videos of that stuff, but I just haven't had the time to get them. I'm sorry about that. But to be honest with you, though, the span sets here in, in Connecticut aren't really as well designed as Long Island because at least on Long Island, they keep the wires nice and neat. Everything's tightly on the cable with some dips where the lights are going to be hung. But here it's like it's just like a mess. You know, it's not as bad as I'm making it out to be, it may sound like, but it's still just not as organized or as neat as the ones on Long Island. So, you know, it's really – it really has a lot to be improved, honestly. But, you know, they're kind of cool, but they just don't have that same charm that the, the Long, Island, Long Island sets did. You know what I'm saying? So um, in terms of laundry projects, I'm not quite not quite sure what you mean by that, but no big projects or anything like that as far as I know. Okay, so um, the next question here is from Ben Miners. And he says, um, do you have any plans to move into your own Sharky Tank soon? I love the updates about your current house with your parents, but it would be really cool to see how you would personalize your own place. I'm really happy where I am right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I have work. You know, I pay my own stuff, stuff like that. You know, so I'm a good contributor to society, if you want to call it that. And I am, I am still trying to move up with work, so that's going to be a good thing. To be, to be completely honest with you, though, my room is personalized to how I like it, you know, and I think that's... I think that's good enough for me. As a matter of fact, a lot of the things around the house I gave suggestions to my mom and dad for, and they agreed with a lot of my suggestions. So it kind of like fits in with it, if you want to say. But my room is personalized, you know. Like you know, I have I have the shark plushies back there, the traffic light, the American flag. So you know, it has it, it, this space is basically my own personalized space, if you want to call it that. It's been very good. And honestly, one of the reasons why I like being here is because I like helping my parents with maintenance, like, you know, like changing the air filters, um, it could be anything, um, working on the hot tub, things like that, so I try to help them out best I can, and, you know, and also, you know, down the road when they get older, I, I'd like to be there for them, you know, if they ever need help, you know, like, they've been, they've been extremely generous to me over the years, and, you know, I'd be, it'd be good to, you know, return that to them, honestly, so that's also, that's also another thing I'm kind of following with them, is like, you know, they did this, all this stuff for me, I'd like to, you know, return the favor down the road, but let's hope that's a while from now, you know what I'm saying, but uh, yeah, you get the idea. Okay, our next question here comes from Jason Hernandez, and he says, what are a few things you hate about Black Friday? Oh, that is a very good question. Okay, well, the first thing is, is just, I mean, just look on YouTube itself and look at the videos of Black Friday, just how crazy it gets when um, the stores open and people just rush in, okay? I mean, there are people waiting outside at what, like, what is it, like 10 o'clock at night or, or, you know, and they're there until like 6 o'clock in the morning? Like, it's insane. And equally to the point, you know, they're probably not saving any money whatsoever. They're just raising the regular price and then making the sale price the regular price. You know what I'm saying? So they probably they probably trick with that too. And one of the things I always like to I always like to think about is like, you know, while they're all out there spending money, okay, I'm at work making money. So so there's one step I got above them, right? So that's one thing I always think about. And just like, you know, staying outside and like, oh, it could be cold temperatures because it's November when that happens. And, you know, just all this stuff they do, wait outside, push, shove. I mean, you know, like it, it's so dumb. It really is. I, like while they're all sitting in traffic and just like, you know, Probably going on Twitter saying, oh my god, traffic's moving so slow, FML, stuff like that. I'm just like, I'm just sitting at home, relaxing, enjoying, and then, you know, hey, I go to bed, wake up the next day, go to work. Hey, awesome, right? I don't take part in that, and I never will. Never. Um, question. His second question is, have your cats been well-behaved for the most part? The one 
I have now brought a couple of lizards in, whoa, and destroyed a couple of cords. Thankfully, he didn't get hurt. Um, other than that, he has good behavior. They've been fine for the most part. You know, lots of times on occasion at night, while I'm up here, they'll be racing around, chasing their toys and things like that. One thing I have to give them credit for is that even when they run around like crazy, I have not heard them once knock something over. So, you know, it's just like... You know, that doesn't mean it's never going to happen, but I'm just amazed that, you know, in the uh, in the five years we've had them now, Marco and Bella, they haven't knocked over one single thing. And I think it's just amazing. So, you know, catch your blessings where you can, right? <laughs> um, how much do you dislike littered trash? Well, you know, I try not to litter. You know, most of the time um, when I'm in, like, let's say, when I'm outside or I'm at the cafeteria at work and I'm trying to... Um, and I'm trying to, you know, clean up, you know, I always, you know, if they have a spot for like, you know, I drink a lot of water at, during lunch and breakfast too, because I'm trying to, you know, keep my soda intake down, which is helping me greatly, which I really like, you know, I'll put the bottle in the recycle bin, I'll put all the trash in the trash bin and put the tray on the tray return, you know, I mean, I mean, like, you know, you see people like, you know, they throw stuff out their car window or they, you know, uh, that's probably the best example I got. I'm just like, why? Like, just keep it in your car and when you get home, put it in your, put it in your trash can. You know, it's easy enough to do. I don't litter. I try not to. You know what I'm saying? Um, what's this? Oh, yeah. Do you agree that it's not a good idea to light seven fireworks at the same time like this? And he has a fancy configuration here. Um, I don't know. I don't light fireworks, so I'm really not sure. I mean, I don't even know how you would light them all at the same time unless you got some fancy fuse. But, you know, I try not to launch those because I'm sure with good common sense like I have and you're, when you're very careful, you won't get injured. And But I'm just like, it, it's just it's just not worth it to me. You know what I'm saying? But um, doing that at the same time, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> um, and do you agree that sparklers are not toys? Yeah, they're not toys. But again, you know, as long as you use them carefully, you should be okay. Case in point is uh, my nieces have held sparklers before and they've been totally fine. No injuries, nothing. You know, my brother and my sister-in-law... And myself, tell me, you know, to be very careful with them. You know, they keep them away, things like that. And they've been totally fine. No, no problems with with them at all. So that's good. Um, oh, and to, to reference that question, you said, 4th of July, in, in parentheses, just slime being recent. <laughs> yeah, so that's why. So there's my uh, thoughts on that for you. Okay, next one we have is by Warren G. And um, they say, um, howdy, I don't really have a question. That's fine. Um... I just enjoy your simple yet informative videos. Well, thanks. They're a lot of fun to do. Um, I have commented a few times here and there uh, of your, I probably meant to say, on your videos, especially the traffic signal ones. Anyway, I've never done videos here in California. I could have done lots of videos on traffic signals because they get changed in my area like every three years. Being in California, I can, I can believe that. Um, and yet in other areas, they still have some from the 1950s and they only change the housing, but keep the same pole and mast arm. None are on wires unless they're in a construction zone. I know for the Southwest, it's like that, um, definitely. Um, uh, what was that? Yeah, I am a fan of the wired signals, but I know they are a dying breed, generally speaking. In some parts, they are, unfortunately. Um, I am 54. When I was a kid, it was not just traffic signals. It was also street lights. The, the type of pole, cement, aluminum, mast, type of light, etc. Um, not sure how it started. I was just... I just was fascinated by objects that lights the road or controlled it. As I got older, I thought it was I thought I was going to be an electrician. Did not pan out. That happens. Um, now with the new LEDs, uh, now with the new LEDs, streetlights have come a long way, but not a fan of the way they built them. They are built without the glass dome, which distributes the light better. Now the light, individual individual tiny LEDs, shoots the light straight down. Not practical in my opinion. Anyway, there you go. Keep up the good work. Thanks a lot, Warren. Yeah, um, you know, it is true that a lot of, um, I know I have heard of a lot of states that have, that have gotten rid of their span sets in, in favor of mast arms. Um, believe it or not, on Long Island, um, I speak to this user um, by the name of Chad. And he um, he's involved with traffic light projects. I'm not going to say who or what he works for, okay? That's for him to disclose if he wants. And um, he did. Um, I, you may remember in some of my previous videos, I mentioned about a lot of the town sets going to mast arms, and that started in 2009. And um, the reason for that, I finally figured out. Chad told me, and I will admit, what he said did make a lot of sense here. Um, he had stated that um, the reason why, um, like a lot of the town sets went to that, is because if in the future they got to replace the lights, 
the existing mast arms they can keep, and they can just drill in new holes and put new lights in, instead of, you know, putting up new poles, new span cable with new wires. When I heard that, I'm like, okay, yeah, that does make, I will admit, that does make sense. Even though I like the span sets better, what he says, I'm like, from a, from a construction worker's point of view, I can see why they do that. And actually, a lot of the um, town sets, not town sets, a lot of the estate uh, sets in the narrower intersections, they're unfortunately um, switching to mast arms too. I know a couple of smaller intersections on Route 110 that I never covered in my videos, um, some of them went to mast arms too. Um, to be completely honest with you though, it's technically possible that the state decided to go that way years ago because a lot of the state sets on smaller intersections, they've been up for years. They haven't been touched. So it's technically possible that they decided to do that a long time ago. For the most part, though, they keep the span sets on the wider intersections, especially in Nassau County. Because, like, you know, the mast arm can only go so far, but the span set covers the entire intersection. So that gives you more versatility and more spots to put the lights. So I guess that's kind of how they do it. Um, and in terms of street lights, there actually is an area around here... Um, well, I don't want to say the town, where they're kind of doing the same thing. They're putting the LED street light next to the existing one, and when the time comes, kind of like traffic light sets, they'll switch it over and take the old lights down. And kind of like you said, they don't have the glass dome. They're more like flat, and I haven't really noticed if they face straight down or not, or if they're more spread out, but I'll find out eventually. But yeah, LEDs do tend, do tend to be more direct instead of spread out, so that could be a problem, but as long as you have good headlights, you know, you should be okay. Um... I think that's everything. Yeah, so that was that was a cool uh, information. Thanks for that. Um, hang on, water time. Okay. And our next question comes from Primate Miners. Um, what is slash are your favorite films? Do you have any specific genre that you enjoy the most? How about TV shows? Oh, you know, I don't really have any favorites per se. I just have some movies that I enjoy. Like, I enjoy action films, comedy films, or even, like, films with time travel, like, like Back to the Future that everyone knows about. I always think time travel is really cool because it's always cool to see how something is and you get to see how it was or how it's going to be. That's just really cool, in my opinion. Um, in terms of um, comedy movies... Uh you know, I, I probably, like, I can't even think of them off the top of my head, but action movies could be, like, you know, Chain Reaction, one of the earlier Ke 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 Keanu Reeves movies, like, movies like that I tend to enjoy. Um, and maybe, like, uh, like Last Action Hero, one of the uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, stuff like that I really enjoy. Um, and, um, and, and TV shows. Well, again, comedies. Actually, just recently I got, um... I got the entire DVD set of the uh, of uh, the 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 oh my gosh the the, the nanny um, by you know one of the that 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 friend Drescher show that she became well known for and I've been watching that show left and right and that show is fantastic I really really enjoy it, it it's it's a great movie a, gr a great TV show rather um, oh you know what now I just happen to think about it one movie I did really enjoy was Clue you know the 1985 movie with you know um, Tim Curry Michael McKean uh, Christopher Lloyd I thought that was a fantastic movie um, I did not see that movie though until 2014 so I was like really late to the party but when I first saw that movie in fact Blade Zero uh, mentioned that movie to me and he suggested I watch it and I'm really glad I did and I watched that movie and it was a lot of fun I I really enjoyed it, and you can tell the people who were um, playing their parts really enjoyed it, too. So that was another good movie, too. So there you go. This next question comes from Gasman75. Um, on a direct drive washer, what is a two-speed motor, and what is its purpose? What is the difference between a three-speed and a two-speed? Well, the two-speed motor is basically, you know, slower speeds to handle delicate um, clothing better. And the three-speed motor kind of gives you an extra low agitation to kind of help along with that. Now, um, on the 1990 machine, um, it was interesting. The, the, the delicate cycle was called uh, Knits Gentle. And um, and uh, it, it would start on what I call normal speed agitation, and then it would switch to the low speed, or the extra low speed if you want to be, um, less, if, you, if it's less confusing for you. And then the rinse agitation did normal speed. I guess because, you know, um, it helps get the soap out a little bit better. But um, if you have a direct drive with a manual speed selector, you, um, that's a, I'm pretty sure you have a three-speed motor if you have a speed selector. And um, it just it, it allows more delicate agitation. So it's basically, that's its purpose, to be more delicate for the laundry. Um, 
Okay, so that's all the questions on that video. Now I'm going to go to my um, my response video, and we will um, see how that one looks. Give me a second here. Uh, where's the... I just lost the thing. Here it is. Okay, sorry about that. Um, let's see here. Okay. So we'll start... Oh my gosh, hold on. Sorry, guys. Give me a second here. Okay. Okay, so the next questions come from uh, Shepard Wolf, and he has multiple questions. He says, what was your Speed Queen's product number? You know, I forgot to look at it before I looked at that question. Sorry, man. But it was the 9 Series um, from 2016, and I think it was like, you know, AWNE92SP something. It was, it, it was the 9 Series, basically. Like, if you put that into Google or something, I'm sure the information you need will come up for that. It's been a good machine. It's been a very good machine, honestly. Um, did you ever have, oh, his next question is, did you ever have a window air conditioner? Um, I never did, but, um, before I was born, um, my, around like the early 80s, um, my parents, um, moved into a house, into a ranch house in, um, Wanta in Long Island, and the air conditioner wasn't necessarily in the window, it was in the wall, and I believe they were located in the dining room and the master bedroom. And from what I understood, just having those two units on made the house very comfortable. And granted, this is the early 80s, so, you know, the air conditioners were working a lot better back then. So, you know, they said that that kept the house very comfortable, even on hot summer days. So, I guess that kind of answers your question. Um, which appliance do you prefer? A duct portable air conditioner or a window air conditioner? Definitely window air conditioner. Um, I'll tell you this. Um, my previous workplace, back in 2013, they were replacing the air handlers, so they needed air conditioning in, in the interim. So what they did was they had all a bunch of these um, portable units um, throughout the building. Now, the biggest problem with those units was that the only place they could put the exhaust for the condenser was in the drop ceiling. But that's probably going to come back down at some point, right? They sort of worked, but like it definitely did not really um, make it as good as it could be. I mean, it made it tolerable for, for what it's worth, but it, in some areas you still felt kind of warm and things like that. And plus, the other problem with those with those portable units is, you know, um, the, the hose that the condenser air goes out of, that hose heats up and it gives off heat, so it kind of defeats the purpose a little bit. And also, you know, as you probably know, air conditioners remove humidity. So the humidity that it removes, that water has to go somewhere. On window units, it simply goes outside, but with these portable units, they drain into a kind of like a bucket or a pan, like a dehumidifier, and every now and then you got to empty it. So that's kind of why they're not as good as well, you know what I'm saying? So um, out of those two, window, definitely. But I mean, if you don't have the choice, go portable. But if you do have a choice, go with window, definitely. Uh, next question is, um, do you have any ceiling fans or a whole house fan? Wow, I never th I never had a whole house fan because I live in Texas and it gets hot even in winter. Yeah, I'm sure it does, man. Um, we have no ceiling fans here. Um, maybe sometime in the future, uh, I'll get one for my room. I would like to, but for now, you know, I'm okay without it. But I think two rooms in this house that could really use it is the family room and the sun room. But again, you know, um, that, that that's up, that's up to my folks. But uh, who knows what could happen in my room? Though I would like one someday. But for now, um, I'm okay. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we don't have a whole house fan. No, um, we have an attic fan, but that's the, that's strictly to um, remove excess heat out of the attic. It doesn't do the whole house. Um, it says, you are more than welcome to ask me questions on my channel. I am also doing a Q&A. Okay, if I think of anything, I'll take a look, man, okay? And um, we have a couple things here from Scant Pair 809869 I think I said those numbers correctly. Um, his, one of his questions is, have you heard have you heard of and or like the 1954 Frigidaire Unimatic? 19, let me say that again. 1955 Frigidaire Unimatic. I've seen them before. They're okay machines, but... I'm not the biggest fan of them, to be honest with you, because they were reliable, but when the time came for something to be worked on, they were not easy to work on from what I've heard. And to be honest with you, solid tub machines in general, I don't care for them that much because they're, they're designed in such a way where if the tub doesn't spin, you're going to be getting that water out by hand. Whereas if you have a perforated tub, like let's say the Direct Drive or the Speed Queen, um, you know, on the Speed Queen, if the belt breaks, and on the direct drive, if the motor coupler breaks, the drain pump will still be 
able to run, so you can run the motor and the dra- water will still drain out. It's much better that way. And the, and I know people with the solid with the solid tub machines, they like to stress about the um, the overflow rinse and the oh yeah overflow rinse for the wash of the rinse. Last I've seen, that doesn't really do much. Okay, I've seen the overflow rinses during the wash cycle and during the rinse cycle. There's still just as much suds there as there was without the water going in. So I don't know what purpose it serves, honestly. So do I like them? Sort of. But are they my favorite? Really no. Um, and his next question is, I have an iPhone 6S. And can we please FaceTime? I got to say no, man. I'm sorry. Nothing against you, but I just don't know you well enough yet. You know what I'm saying? So I want to know someone more before I go that route. Hopefully you understand, okay? Nothing against you. Just not ready for it. Okay. Um, okay. Next question here comes from Washerboy2016. Um, what time span would you say are the best of the direct drives? I know my 2001, for example, with the neutral drain, does, doesn't sound as cool as some of the earlier ones. I should just record certain parts of the cycles on my machine and upload them. I Maybe mean, if you want to, that's up to you. You know, it's your channel. Um, the time span. I don't know the exact year that this happened, but I would say the best time span would be before auto temperature control became the only option. Because someone has a um, a Kenmore direct drive from the mid to late 80s, and um, his temperature selection has auto temperature control or the five standard ones like the 1990 machine had, which was, you know, Cold, cold, warm, cold, warm, warm, hot, cold, and hot, warm. And then they have a other, other section of auto temperature control. So it was optional. And that's the way it should be. Not this force stuff, which I can't stand. And I speak for a lot of people when I say that. So that's the time span. I unfortunately don't know what year that started, though. I'm going to guess from 1986 to 2007. That's just my guess. Um... In terms of your 2001, your transmission may have the redesigned connecting gear for the agitate gear, which was made a little bit thinner. So I don't know when that changeover happened, but maybe that's why yours doesn't sound as good because um, because of the thinner gear. But then again, no two transmissions are exactly alike, so um, maybe it could be something else or it could just be the redesigned gear. Maybe that's why. Um, we have one here from Michael Karen, and he says... Um, on an older Whirlpool belt drive washer, I also hear four spray rinses on each spin cycle. I've heard of those four spray rinses before, or I think maybe seven was advertised at some point. But again, not really my biggest uh, interest because, like you know, I don't think they're doing that much when they spray for that short amount of time. Because, um, uh, because on the direct drives, um, on the second spin. You have water coming in as the spin starts for 10 or 15 seconds, and that's a good amount of water as the load is spinning up. And then when the tub is at full speed or just about at full speed, you get another spray of 10 to 15 seconds. And I think that's more than enough to rinse off the laundry like it has to. You know what I'm saying? I think those two are just fine. On older direct drives too, there's a third spray rinse that lasts like maybe two seconds and then stops. Again, maybe it's good, but that one just didn't really seem to serve much purpose. But it was kind of cool that it was that cool that it was there. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's one thing to think about. Okay, and the last one here comes from Blue Thunder Boom. What is your favorite season? Um, I'll take spring if it's not too cold, but summer by far. Some people can't stand the heat, and I will admit we did have that heat wave just recently. But I like summer. You want to know why? I don't have to shovel anything. No snow blowing, no shoveling. And you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, you can go outside with like, you know, shirt and shorts. If I'm, if I'm on my property, I'll walk without shoes on. You know what I'm saying? Provided it's safe to. So it's like, yeah, you know, in the winter, you can't do that unless you want to freeze freeze yourself. And like, you know, um, you don't have to worry about pipes freezing, hoses freezing, things like that. Definitely summer. Summer's my favorite season. Um, what is your favorite activity? Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, uh, let's see. Um, I mean, I like to. I I, I, I do bowl every now and then. You know, I do. I do enjoy bowling and things like that. And um, and uh, I like to. You know, I like to fix stuff. As you know, I'm kind of like a handy person. Walk around the property. We'll look at things. Look at things working. Things like that. You know. Um, I guess my favorite non-internet activity would be to. 
you know, maybe go out to eat once in a while. Like, like usually I'll go to Applebee's for half price appetizers. Um, and see friends and go bowling. I guess those are my favorite activities. There's really a number of things I do. Again, favorites with me is a hard thing for me to say because I like a lot of things, but those are the things I like to do the most. But will I call them favorites? Not really, but they're like kind of on the top of my list if you want to call it that. Um, what are your favorite washers and dryers besides direct drive washers? Well, so far it would be the Speed Queens that we have. The Speed Queens do a fantastic job, you know, good washing, um, very good drying, you know, uh, the, really, um, they, everything comes out washed, everything comes out dry with the time dry. And actually, um, but, oh, give me a second here, more water. One of the things that, <clears throat> sorry, let me show that again. One of the things I learned with the Speed Queen dryer is that, um, I've stopped using auto sensing for towels. I only use auto sensing for my work clothes because you know I don't want them to shrink, and they're usually done within like fifty to fifty-two minutes, which isn't really that bad. Now, in terms of the towels, okay, I thought auto sensing would be more efficient, as I like to say it, but it's really not. Last time I did auto sensing with towels, I did the heavy duty, which does you know the um, the high heat. And um, I've set the dryness to, to near dry, which is second from the highest. And that cycle would run for like 80 minutes almost sometimes, 75 to 80 minutes, which that's not saving you much of anything because the dryer is running for a longer amount of time. And, and I was like, there's no way this dryer is taking this long to wash the t uh, to, to dry the towels. I'm going to do something else here. So I switched back to time dry for towels. The really thick towels that we have may require 60, uh, 60 minutes, but um, but regular towels only require 50 minutes every single time. They come out dry. So the dryer is running anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes less, which is pretty significant, especially in terms of getting your laundry done at a good time. So, yeah, I've come to learn that using auto sensing for towels doesn't work very well. I just use auto sensing for regular clothing. Okay, and I use the regular auto sensing, which is medium heat. I don't put regular clothing in high. I put it in medium. Okay, and my work clothes come out perfect every single time. No wrinkles, in good shape, no shrinking, nothing. So that's how I operate the dryer. So just a little side note. But um, aside from direct drives, the Speed Queens are definitely my favorite. What types of weather do you like? Well, sunny weather would be the most obvious, of course. I like going outside when it's nice out, blue sky, you know, um very welcoming and that's another thing uh, let me go back to your first question for a second here um you know in the summer it also gets um darker out much later because we're more angled towards the sun so you know um when it gets dark at like you know um like you know 4 30 and also because we're back in standard time at the time i hate it i don't like the fact that you know um i get out of work and it's already dark out it's like uh it's like you know i'll live obviously but of course it's just it's not preferred by me i like when like you know when i walk outside from work it's like 4 30 4 45 still nice and bright bright outside it doesn't get dark until i'm gonna say like maybe 7 30 is my kind of tolerance cutoff time you know what i'm saying so i'll put that in as well um i also do like rainy weather sometimes as long as i don't have to leave the house you know what i'm saying sometimes when i'm at home and i don't have much to do just that rainy weather is a good stay in weather provided i don't have to go to work you know what i'm saying more often than not i do have to go to work when it's raining but when i don't it's fantastic so sunny weather is my favorite rainy weather could be like kind of a second you know what i'm saying um and the last question he has here is what is your favorite electronics and appliances including the vintage alternative okay let's see well, I mean, refrigerators are pretty cool. You know, they're they're a pretty simple. Uh, well, back then they were. They're a mostly simple uh, appliance. You know, remove heat, keep things cool. You know, stuff like that. Um, dishwasher, dishwashers. I didn't mention this in my last video. I meant to, but I forgot. Um, one dishwashers I really like are the vintage ones that they fill while they're pumping. And I love that. You know what I'm saying? So case in point would be Jay's Whirlpool dishwasher in his basement. You know, um, that that one, I like how it works. Like, you know, the water will start coming in and then three seconds later the motor turns on. And then as it's filling, you hear the pressure build up and the motor, you hear like this growling sound, which is really cool. And, like you hear the pressure change as it's building up as the water's filling. I love that. You know, um, our GE pot scrubber, which, you know, which none of you ever saw in any videos, 
um, that machine was was awesome back at the Long Island house because you would turn it on and the motor would run for a while and then when you heard the water come in again you'd hear you'd hear the pressure build up the water gets stronger inside and plus that dishwasher the vent on the door was always open so you also got to hear the noise from the splashing inside and just hearing that thing build up pressure as it was filling that I just loved hearing that that was so awesome to hear and then during drain um. On Jay's dishwasher, the motor stops and then reverses. But on the GE pot scrubber, the motor always spins one direction. And then in order to drain, this solenoid valve um, opens and you hear this really loud click. And then at the same time, the inside of the dishwasher goes quiet. And then you start hearing the water gurgle down the sink drain, which again was just awesome. You know, I, I wish someday in the future, I hope I can find a GE pot scrubber. I would love to. Those, those dishwashers were just awesome. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, the modern one we have now, it does what it's supposed to. It does wash our stuff, but it just doesn't sound any, anywhere near as exciting. It's just too quiet. And hopefully we'll see, hopefully it'll last a while. Will it last long? I don't know. But so far, doing okay. We'll see how long it lasts. And everybody, that's it. Those are all the questions. Um, really, now that I think about it, I don't think I had less than the last time. I think it was about the same, maybe as last time, but I was more certain in my answers. I guess you could say. And um, yeah, it's just you know, it's fantastic. You know, I passed three thousand subscribers, and I just yesterday I passed uh, three million views, which is awesome. You know, again, this channel has had steady growth. You know, I've been here for almost thirteen years now, but I, you know, I don't care. Steady growth is better than no growth. I'll take it, and I'm glad you guys always come back to keep watching. So that's everything, guys. Thank you very much for those questions. That was a lot of fun, and um, hope you guys had fun asking them and listening to my answers as well. A lot of fun to do, and hopefully, um, it's I don't know, not hopefully, at some point in the future, we'll make another video. And what will it be of? I guess we'll find out. Thank you very much for watching, and take care.